What's up, animators? So today I'm going to show you how to make uh, this quick animation here. You got this uh, circular uh, rings here with the uh, with the star in the middle. Looks like something I've seen somewhere out there before. And uh, we're going to use a classic tween here to make this. And yeah, let's get started. I'm going to throw some easing in there as well. All right. So here I have a nice clean canvas. So I'm going to make a circle here first. I'm going to go over here with my shape tool. Hold down the left mouse button there on that rectangle tool. Go over here to oval tool. Bam. All right. So I want to make a go with a little white fill with the red ring on the outside stroke red. Oh, that's not white. That, uh, that's white right there. Make sure this one's white. That one's not white. This is actually no color. This one's white right here. So I can see it better. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of my stage here. Here's stage. I just selected the stage tab. And I'm just going to make my stage like a light blue color. Something like this. Oh, this one's cool right here. All right. Back over to the tool tab over here. Settings for my tool. Stroke size. Let me try. Let me try 10. See how that looks. And I'm going to start making a circle up here in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to hold on the shift key. And then hold on the left mouse button as a drag so I can make a nice circle there. Cool. That looks good there. If you want to make the red ring there thicker, go over here to the selection tool. Click on it two times, and then you can increase the stroke size right there a bit. See? So I increase it there to 12. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to make a, a another circle, another circle with my shape tool here. This time the tool is going to be blue. And actually, let me select my shape tool first. There we go. So I had the selection tool on. That means that was going to change the color of that. And fill right here. Blue. This one looks good. I'm going to make it off to the side here. And then I'll bring it in. Uh, I think that looks good right there. Go over here to selection tool, double click it, and I'll bring it in right there. All right, about there. I haven't let go of the mouse yet. Sorry, I haven't deselected it yet. So I'm going to use my keyboard here, try to line it up just right. So that looks good. I think I had it good on the first try. Maybe make the stroke thicker or wider. I don't know. That looks cool right there. I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to bring in a star here for the center of it. I'm going to bring a star in there. So I'm going over here back to my shape tool, right on the toggle tool, hold down the left mouse button inside there, and down a polystar tool, bam. And over here in the properties panel, I have um, tool options, and this is here for my polystar tool. Right now, if I uh, try to make a shape, it's going to be uh, a pentagon there. So undo. I want a star, so I'm going over here to star, and I want it to have five sides, that's cool. Star point, 0 0.5, that's cool. And fill color, I want to make a white star. Stroke, no stroke, no stroke. So no color there on the outline there. And I'll make a star here off to the side, and then I'll bring it in. Something that looks like it'll fit in there just right. You know, it doesn't have to be with the with one of the points pointing straight up. It could be off to the side. We're going to make this spin later anyways. And I think that's good right there. I'm going to go to Selection Tool, click it, and then try to bring it in there. I haven't deselected it yet. I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard, try to adjust it in place. There we go. Let me click out of there. Cool. That looks good. All right. So there I have my uh, my circle there. I'm going to drag select the whole thing. And or you can also just click right here inside the frame. Inside the, uh, yeah, the frame. Or you can also hit Control A and it selects everything there on your stage. <clears throat> All right. Now I want to make this into a symbol. Uh, by converting it to a symbol, I'll be able to have this isolated uh, static uh, animation for it. So I wanted to spin. And I can have it spinning here on its own without me having to constantly go and make all these rotation spins. I'll just make one cycle. So I'll show you guys now. I got it selected there. Got the whole thing selected. Right click it. You get this pop-up menu. And from that pop-up menu, you are going to select convert to symbol. Convert to symbol. There we go. You get the little pop-up menu here. You can name it there. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, USA underscore spinner. There we go. It would say spinner. Type graphic registration for the center. That'll be like a point that's weighted down, pivot point, uh, rotation point, whatever you want to call it. So make sure that one's in the center. Type graphic. Give it a name. No spaces. So, but you can use an underscore. That's fine. And I'm going to click OK here. All right, there we go. So now that it's a symbol, it has this uh, blue boundary box around it. And this thing in the center is kind of like a screw head. And then I can click outside of it. I can click on it. And then kind of just moves the whole thing around. Let me put it back, undo, control Z, control Z, control Z. All right, but I want to make a rotating animation. And I'm going to do that in editing mode because if I make it here, 
I can definitely make one here. Every 10th frame, I can rotate it uh, 90 degrees. But then if I want to animate or rot rotate all the way this way, I also have to move it. So let's say I want to rotate it uh, going down. Then I have to do more rotation animations. Uh, so instead of what I can do in editing mode, I can have its own animation for its own symbol here. So I'm going to do that. So I can do other stuff with the symbol. I can move it around, and it'll constantly just be re rotating there uh, thanks to the editing mode animation. So I'm going to double click it. There we go. Now I'm in editing mode. And I can tell because I have this new thing up here that wasn't there. To exit out of here, you can hit that arrow right there, and now I'm out of it. But also, if you notice, right now I can't select the individual parts over here. Like I say, I want to take the star out or this ring out or change the color of it. I don't have any options for it over here on the properties panel. But if I double click it, now I do have those options there. So I can change the colors here, move it around. And um, I get this uh, here, this again. This is just letting me know I'm in editing mode. Let me click out of there. Cool. I already see I can select individual parts. Let's see, I don't want that. I want to choose the color of it. You make it green or whatever. So this blue, I think it was that shade of blue. All right, let me go with uh, a different color here, just in case, just in case something happens. I'm gonna go with these pastel colors, lighter, lighter tones here, a lighter red, a lighter red. Where do I find a pastel red? It's like a pink red. Not a pink red, it's just a pink. And what about that one? That was cool. A rusty red. I'll go with the same one there. Cool, there we go. <clears throat> Alright, so there I have my uh, my shield again. I just changed the colors of it. I'm in editing mode and I want to create a rotating animation. I'm going here to frame 10. I'm gonna right click in there, insert keyframe. All right, there we go, I added stuff in there. This timeline is actually independent from my main timeline. This is a different timeline. Let me click on this arrow here so I can exit out of editing mode just so you guys can see this. See, there's my regular timeline. It's not in there. It's over here in editing mode. Double click it. There you go, I got that keyframe in there. So I'm gonna go over to frame 10, right in there. Then I'm gonna go over here and select the free transform tool. And I'm gonna use this to rotate it uh, 90 degrees. And I'm gonna go clockwise. I'm gonna create a. I'm gonna continuously rotate it clockwise every ten, every ten frames. I'll uh, rotate it 90 degrees to complete a full rotation. So here we go. Hover your mouse. Select the free transform tool. Hover your mouse over one of these corner little brackets or handles. Hold on the shift key and then rotate it. Don't pull it because you might get make it taller. But just give it one, one 90 degree turn. Not too much. There we go. You can see it there from the previous frame up to frame 10. A little rotation there. Go back over here to frame 20. Right click in there. Enter keyframe. And the whole thing selected because I have this uh, frame there selected. Go over here to corner. Uh, don't go on it because then you're going to get a double side arrow. You don't want that. You want to get the loop icon here off to the side. And you know you can rotate it off to the side there. 90 degrees. Cool. And it snaps to it. He kind of just jumps on it. There we go. And then 30 right here, enter keyframe, another 90 degree turn. And then one more here at 40, right click, enter keyframe. And then one more 90 degree turn. And there you go, we've completed the whole cycle. <clears throat> Hit the play button here so I can see it. Cool, I wanna have it consistent all the way through. Uh, sorry, I just wanna continuously see it. So I'm gonna hit the, here the loop icon. This is not vital for the project, hitting this loop icon. This is just so for me to see it here as an animator, as an animator so I can continuously see it in a loop. And then up here, I get this little blue bar, and that's what's gonna loop there. Uh, right now, I the play button, it's just gonna loop whatever's in that space. So not really much going on right there, so I wanna make it wider. So I'm gonna hover over my mouse inside of that blue bar, and to my mouse cursor it becomes a double-sided arrow there. Hold down the left mouse button and drag out so I can cover up the all the uh, animated frames there. So play button, there we go, got a nice little spin. And I got a little bit of a wobble though, that, that's okay. It makes it um, a little more neat. You can tell that it's rotating. So if something's off center, that's all right, perfectly fine. Don't want it too perfect. Uh, if you look at tires in an actual car, they actually have a little bit of a warble there, a little bit of a little wobble. Maybe getting an alignment makes real. All right, I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna pause it. And that animation there is complete. So I'm gonna exit out of editing mode here. There we go. So it's not spinning right now. The spin will come soon. The spin is coming up right now. 
All right, so here comes the another keyframe, but this is in the regular timeline, not the editing uh, mode timeline. And we're gonna make it spin, here it comes. So over here, frame 50, I'm gonna right click in there, enter keyframe, and the key event is that this uh, spinner here is gonna be over here on the right. So uh, you can use the free transform tool or selection tool. If you have trouble moving it with the free transform tool, go ahead and go over to your selection tool because you have this little uh, pivot point here, center of gravity. If you, you can end up moving it off and that's gonna mess up your, your project. Let's say you wanna rotate it, it's gonna rotate with respect to that little dot right there. Let me uh, try it. See, you, don't, you, you probably don't wanna do that right now, right? You might, that's useful for other projects, but we're not doing that here. Let me try to put it back. There it is. I just hit Control Z to undo. So when you do move it out, when you do move this across using the free transform tool, hover your mouse in the inside of it somewhere away from that dot. Uh, make sure you have uh, the four sided arrow there, the compass next to your arrow, to your mouse cursor. And then you can just move it out. So I'm going to go at, uh, over here towards the right edge, somewhere in the middle of the right edge. You can have it touch the edge or somewhere near it. So we're going to pretend it hits here and then it bounces off. Let me zoom out of it so we can see better. Let me percent there center just so you can see the outer boundaries there of the stage all right so here's that frame 50 so from 1 to 50 let me hit the play button it's already spinning and it's not playing what happened oh so the loop is activated except the loop is just here for frame one you can't really see it because the mouse cursor is there let me pause it the mouse cursor is there so you couldn't really see it but i knew it was there i knew it was on because i had that lighter gray on there so let me just make it wider here you trying to trick me adobe animate I know your tricks. There you go. So he's spinning. You just need to make more frames. All right. So now we want to animate it going uh, over here to the right. So to do that, in traditional frame by frame animation, you would go in here and uh, insert additional keyframes and slowly move it like it's kind of just jumping over, right? So at frame 10, you would put it here, frame 20, 30, 40, 50. But instead, we're going to we're gonna tween this. We're going to use a classic tween. So in between frames 1 and 49, just right-click in there and create classic tween and Adobe Animate will tween it for us. See, there we go. Let me hit the play button. Bam! Control Enter. And we're spinning right here. You guys remember those spinner rims they used to put on cars? I thought those were so cool back in the day. And now I just, I just hate them. They're really tacky looking to me. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll come back in style. I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, I'm thinking they're cool right now. All right, enough about spinner rims. So there's that. And then I wanted to ricochet off of that. It's going to bounce off of that wall. It's going to hit the floor right here. So I'm going to go over here to frame 70. This one's going to be a faster move. So it hits the wall and then bam. All right, frame 70 right here. Right click, insert keyframe, and you key event is that it's going to go off the stage. So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to selection tool. It's easier to move it. I don't got to worry about moving that little center point there. And just drag it out over here outside of the stage. And notice since this is just 20 frames from 50 to 70, and that's to cover this this space, this distance here in 20 frames. Whereas before, it has 50 frames to cover a shorter range, so it'll move a little slower there. And then from 50 to 70, it'll move a lot faster because that's less frames, and it's um, longer distance it has to cover it in less frames, so it has to move faster. All right, so I have to add another classic tween in there. So I'll right click between 50 and 69, create classic tween. Bam. Let me extend here the the loop and then play button. Control enter. There we go. Bam. Bam. All right. Looking cool. It's a little choppy because of uh, my, the processing power of my computer. Maybe yours will look a little choppy too. Uh, let's play around with the ease because right now the speed is constant. So from A to B to C, so I'm saying uh, each keyframe will be uh, like. Uh, like a different point, point A, point B, point C there. Yeah, it does look a little choppy. The speed is consistent throughout the whole thing. So from A to B here, speed is the same. And then from B to C, the speed is the same there as well. Or the velocity, I should say, the velocity is the same. So it does move faster over here. Uh, so let's do something about that. Let's uh, do some easing, 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 ease out. It's easy. So easing is just basically, um, uh, so it's what car moves. So when you start up your car, you got to speed up. So you start out slow, and then you're going fast. And then when you come to a stop at a light or a stop sign, you're going fast, and then you slowly slow down. So let's uh, do some of that here for the shield. That'll give it much more natural, organic look here. 
So I'm going to click in any frame right here, right here between 1 and 49. Click on a frame. And then in the properties panel, you get properties for the frame. So for instance, if I click on my shape, there's a, oh, let me click on my shape there. Can't click on my shape. Let me go to right here. So there we go. So there's my shape. I get, I can get the object uh, properties here from my object. But if I click on a frame here, then this one lights up here. So now I can have the frame tab there and I can get properties for the frame. So any frame between one and 49, and you're going to go down here, locate the tween menu. If you click, it, it's going to close it. So make sure it's open. And right here, effect, click on classic ease. So just consistent speed. And here we go. Cool. There's our graph. So it's just a consistent speed all the way throughout. But I want to do something different here. I want this to speed up and then slow down. Sorry, I wanted to start slow and then speed up. So I'm going to go here to ease in. There we go. Or is it ease out? Let me check. Pausing it, but I'll let you guys see right here what I got. All right. So yeah, it is, it is an ease in. Uh, we're going to do an ease in back, which is similar to a picture here, doing the wind up. It's a picture I got from Wikipedia. So you see a picture pitching, you know, got the ball and it kind of like wind it up, right? They go back a bit and then shroom, all right, slows down and then flies out of there. So we're going to go with a similar effect. And here's a graph representing that movement there. So ease in, make sure it's uh, this bracket here, this section between A and B. Ease in. And then you're going to click on back. See, there's a graph there. So the, the shield is going to be over here. It's going to start off here in the upper left-hand corner. It's going to step back a bit, and it's going to just shoot out. So here's the, uh, the picture winding it up. Then it throws the ball out, all right? So ease in, and then double-click on back, so it'll change to back. If you don't double-click it, it's not going to change there. If you just click it one time, it's just going to leave it as it was. So let me go to frame one and hit the play button. You guys can see this. There we go. Cool. And control enter for the preview. Looks a lot neater now. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go over here between frames uh, 50 and 70. And I'm going to do an ease out. So an ease out would be the opposite. So this one starts out slow and then goes fast. The ease in starts out slow and then speeds up. So now I want it to start fast and then slow down in the other section here. So that's going to be uh, ease out. So I'll click on the frame between 50 and 69. I honestly keep forgetting them. I always have to look them up. I write them down. Let me look at my notes over here. Ease out. So now the graph's going the other direction. Uh, this time I'm going to go with a circle right here. See, now we get a nice, uh, supposed to be like a quarter of a circle. So if you would complete this whole thing, you should have a circle-ish looking thing. Looks more like around the rectangle. But ease out circle and then it'll start start out really fast and then slow down at the end so i'm gonna double click circle you won't really see the end because it'll be off of the stage there so it's kind of like um throwing something at the wall and it bounces off there we go there we go cool so you can uh, leave it there you can stop right there that's good if not uh, you can take it to the next level. Let me just save it first. I'm going to file, save as. I just named it Spinner for YouTube and make sure it's a .fla file. That way it's a, an Adobe Anime project file. You can always go back and work on it and save. All right. And uh, something that'll take it to the next level is perspective. Perspective. So you can make this look like it's coming up closer to you. Uh, even though we already tweened this, we already animated it, you can still go to these key frames and add additional animations. So I'm actually I'm gonna go right here to frame 50, click on frame 50, and then go over here to the free transform tool. And I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm actually gonna make the shield bigger. So it looks like it uh, it's coming from the from far out and then come in up here closer to the to the foreground. So for the background of the foreground. So it's uh create the illusion of uh, of depth here and get some perspective. So free transform tool, frame 50, hover your mouse on the corner uh, handle here, hold on the shift key and pull out, make it bigger. See, there we go. And let's say I want to make it look like it kind of turned a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to distort it a bit like that. There we go. Something like that. And now it's actually going to incorporate that into the classic tween watch. I'm going to try to get that shape there. See, it looks like it's turning. There we go. A little flat there. Bam. You try to flatten out some more. That looked pretty cool. Looked a lot of cool, actually. Let me leave some white in there. There we go. Control enter. 
all right then it's and then it stands up again at 70 but at 70 i want to keep it distorted and make it even bigger so here at 50 i made it bigger um should try to double it up in size make it somewhat noticeable then at 70 i'll make it even bigger so at 70 i'm going to triple it so i'm going to go down over here where it's at frame 70 free transform tool i try to triple this hold on the shift key corner handle pull up the mouse actually you can just do the whole thing like this you don't gotta you don't gotta do this scale it up and then to sort it you can do the whole thing at once that looks humongous right there that's good if uh, you're changing the size of it you end up inside the stage once you're done uh, transforming it just bring it back down outside of the stage there same thing with the other one if it went off the stage you can bring it back inside the stage after you're done sorting it all right control enter bam bam all right, I want to put it further out so it moves a little faster there. All right, control enter. Bam. There we go, it looks real cool. Nice. All right, I see you want to make it look like it's hitting something. You can do that too. Uh, let's see, there we go. Let me just save this again, file save. Uh, you can, if you want to my students, you can submit it like this, as is. I'm going to go to file, export, export, uh, video media and then make sure it's h.264 uh, ame default ame activate start adobe media encoder and then export and it'll export it for you uh, if you want to add some more to it you can add another layer let me lock this one up i'm done animating that plus sign here and then this one i'll just put in the bottom and i'm just going to call this one wall or background something like that let's call it wall <laughs> There we go. And then you can try using uh, shape tools over here. I'm gonna use the rectangle tool and stroke, 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 tool, stroke, fill. I'm gonna go with the, uh, I'm gonna go with the, with the brick color. I think a brick back there somewhere, a brick pattern or just a brick wall. All right, and now I'm gonna go over here and make the stroke thinner. Let me try five and I'll make like a wall back here. There we go. And then free transform tool, double click it, and then distort it. Keep the verticals tall. I'm just gonna make it look like, a, create the illusion here of a, of a wall there. All right. So as long as you keep the verticals up and down, you're good. Let's see, there, it's gonna hit that wall. Bam, bam, bam. Let's see where's the hit in the wall? Around there. Maybe make it wider. Vertical, so vertical, and I accidentally uh, clipped off the outline there. So I'm gonna leave the outline. Let me go back, double click it. There you go. I want the outline in there because the drawings uh, tend to have an outline. My shield doesn't, but let me uh, should have left one on the shield because now it's hard to distinguish it from the from the wall there. I'll just change the color of the wall. Uh, what are the colors of walls? Light blue, white, gray. I'm gonna go with that gray color there. And then I can try making a ground in here. Let me go over here to the free transform tool again. This I'm gonna activate this right here, object drawing mode. So that if I make a, a floor here, let me go away over here, selection tool. And I activated, oops, I double clicked it. Let's put it in any mode, I don't want that. Let me get out of there. Oh, double click it, undo, 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 all right. Selection tool here, activate the uh, object drawing mode. Uh, let me go to selection tool first. I'll make this also uh, double click it. I'll make it like an object drawing. So I'm gonna click on this button right here, create object. There you go, now it's a blue boundary box. Not have to worry about things clipping off of it. Rectangle tool, that's activated there. Fill color, I'm with the darker gray. I'm gonna make a floor here. And then free transform tool, click here. And I'm just gonna distort it I can try to make a ground here and keep going until I match up that angle there. There we go. So there's my ground there. And it's outside of the stage there too. Control enter. There we go. And if that's still not enough, hey, you can make a horizon back there too. So let me go over here. And this time I'm going to go with no stroke. And I can make something out there like, uh, like 
what? Like a river or something with a darker blue color back there. And keep it uh, outside of those uh, little selection tool here. <clears throat> And keep it outside of the black there for the outline. There you go, control enter. Well, I got a little gap in there. Move that over. Control enter to preview. There we go. And I can try to make a little city in the background as well. So I guess I'll change the color of my stage here. Let's go with the orangey color, sunset color. Towards the end of the day, I'm gonna go over here to line tool. And I'm going to start down here and go up. I'm going to go in. I'll just hold down the left mouse button and drag in. Stop there. Hold down the left mouse button and drag. Hold down the left mouse button and drag. I'm going to make a silhouette of like a city back there. What city? Whatever city you want. All right, selection tool. Let's see if I can click inside of here. So I can't click inside of there. So what I'm going to do is that everything's touching there. I'm gonna make sure the other layers lock. I'm gonna control A to select everything. And then I'll go over here to break apart. There we go. I'm gonna go over here to the rectangle tool again. Got that active there, cool. And no stroke. I got that gray color there. And see, is it darker than this gray? I think it's darker than that gray. Create a box over here on top. And then selection tool, click on it, right click. Send to back over here. Arrange, arrange, send to back. And didn't go to the back. Try it again, send to back. Uh, didn't go to the back because these over here are not the same thing as well. So I'm going to bring these forward, right click. I got to convert them over to this object here, too. There we go, drawing objects. There we go. So now it did go to the back there. There we go. Now I'm going to control A. I'll make them all drawing objects again. These right here or break apart. There we go. And I can select this part outside of it and delete that. There we go. Bam. I uh, lost my outline there. And I was bringing it back. There we go. Control enter. Bam. Bam. All right. So what I'm going to do next is um make like a pal sign back there so i'm gonna lock this layer up add a new layer should be in between these two cool and then pal it's gonna call it pal and it hits around there so i'm gonna go one layer before it right click it insert key frame right there insert key frame and then i'm gonna go right here to the rectangle tool it's like the polystar tool and star Number of sides, let me change it to nine, make it pointier, 0.3, and no stroke on that one. And then the fill, it's going to be like a, a yellow pal sign color. Uh, this one looks cool. And let me insert another frame over here somewhere. So about two or three out from the last keyframe, from the middle keyframe there. Right click, enter keyframe. All right, back to this one over here. That's just so um, when I create my star, it doesn't go all the way through the end there. It stays right here within these frames. All right, hold on the shift key or just start making it there. That looks good there. Selection tool, double click it. Oh, too many, sorry, just one click, no double clicks. Let me go back. That took me to edit in mode there. That looks good there. All right, control enter. There we go. And it's just there for um, a moment of a second because of the, I blocked it off to that keyframe. I can try to extend it. I can click inside this frame here, hold down the left mouse button and drag it out a bit, make it a little longer. Hold down the left mouse button and drag it out some more. I want to keep it there a little longer. There we go. I think that's too long, so let me take it back one more. Troy enter. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Save this one again. Just update it. File save. And now to export it. And uh, export video media. And H.264 default AME. 
And like I mentioned earlier, if you're one of my students, this whole other setup in the background, the little town, the wall, the floor, the star is just, uh, there's just a little bonus in there, unnecessary. Export and just wait for this and I have my video file in a bit. All right, so once you get the Adobe Media Encoder here, with the, which takes about three days for it to generate, you can watch your, your animation. Bam! Pow! Kaboom! Actually, it probably wouldn't make a sound like kaboom, but you know, you can make whatever sound you like. And uh, you can watch my other videos to learn how to add some sound in there. But here you go. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome freaking day. I hope you enjoy animating out there. And uh, take care. Be kind to you and everyone else. Bye.